Welcome to a new episode of the New Normal Podcast. If this is your first time here, thank you. My name is Andrew Mayer, and this podcast is all about innovation and innovating on the internet. Today is a bit of a different podcast format from what I usually do, as it was just a very spontaneous but timely interview. I connected with Mark Fletcher via Zoom, as I was hoping to meet him on a recent trip through New York City just a few weeks back. I made a video back in August uh, where he was the person in that story, and I wanted to talk to him about it. So I'll cut through to the chase and get to my chat with Mark Fletcher. Thank you for being here and appreciate you taking a bit of your time. Listen, I wanted to ask you a question. Or I won't marry you, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, well. Love you dearly as a friend. It was worth a try. It's got to keep it plutonic. All right. Um, so I wanted to ask you, as I mentioned to you, about a video that I made five weeks ago. Yeah. And so I'm going to record this and uh, edit out. I'm recording all this, but I'm going to edit out all of that and just grab some sound bites. But the um, on the 17th of August of this year, I recorded a four and a half minute video while I was on holiday in southern Germany because I saw a message from a friend of yours that had been put out on social media. And it affected me. And if you want to go see the video and see what it's all about, it'll be linked in the show notes, as everything's supposed to be, uh, as this is an audio podcast. But that video, um, which I titled Damn You Social Media, uh, has gotten over 3,300 views, 50 comments. I have not counted how many DMs I got uh, out of that, but I have had four coffees with people in different cities as invitations afterwards, and plenty more that are lined up in queue, um, which was part of what I was saying is we spend so much time communicating on social media, we're not having real conversations with people. Um, what do you think? And I know you saw it uh, shortly after I put it up there, and there's been plenty of interactions uh, as well. Um, what do you think got people so triggered? Because, I mean, 3,300 views for me is, is, is triple of what I normally get on anything I put on, on LinkedIn. It's usually 800, 900 if I'm lucky. I'll get that many clicks or views or whatever. So this, for me, was a huge, uh, a huge pickup there. What do you think got them so activated? Well, coming from a person who usually gets one, two hundred thousand views on their video, yeah, right? I could only dream about that. You know, the first time I heard about it was a friend of mine sent me a note. Wow, I didn't know you were in the hospital. I imagine you saw the video that was put up and I said, no, I, I didn't at all. And I guess probably the following day is when I saw it the first time. And I sat and I watched it from my hospital room because I was still in the hospital. And it just, even though I was the subject of it, it, the message tore at my heart. And I think that our circle of friends are in the same environment. We're so engrossed with what we're doing all day long. It did to them what the event did to you. Grab them by the throat and say, hey, there's more to life. Don't forget about that. Open your damn eyes. And I think that's what is the primary piece of the popularity. So... I have a I have a sequel to that video that I have filmed and of course not edited, so I'm good at making stuff and not cutting it and getting it out. But um, but the, the the sequel circles around of how the reactions to that video were, um, and the really wonderful conversation. I had people call me and say, you know, I'm glad you're doing well. I don't know who that is you were talking about in the video, but uh, you made such a point here. And, um, and and as I said, you know, one of those coffees, I went all the way to Zurich, five hours away, to go have a cup of coffee uh, with a guy who I hadn't seen, I think, in 16 years. And um, and there was another one who I had coffee with not far away that I rode a bicycle to. 
and we hadn't seen each other since 1997 when he was working at Lucent uh, with me together. And um, we were like, you know, that's 23 years or 24 years since we last say, saw each other. And it was, those conversations happened, or those meetings actually happened after that video. And, um, and so I, I filmed a subsequent, so a sequel to it saying, well, this, some of the social media stuff can be pretty good because you can find people that you may have lost uh, sight of or you don't have a current business card or whatever it is there. Uh, that's out there. Um, I know that you're doing more and more on social media as well. Um, for for your point, are you are you finding the stuff you're putting out there is getting traction? You know, it's hard to tell because you see the interaction on the metrics that are there, but I don't think you see the real impact. There's no measurement of how did I emotionally impact somebody to say, oh, that was really cool. Did I make them smile? Did I make them mad? Uh, did I make them happy? Did I make them sad? I made them watch. And that's all I can say. Um, and this is why there's this constant struggle between audio and audio video. Because a good part of your video was the video content. Whether it was walking through a trail in the woods or looking at an open field and the only audio piece to that that was absolutely perfect were the, the cowbells that were ringing, uh, in, in the distant field. And it was just, That's it right. was the perfect right. sound bite, if you will, uh, just to remind you that the world is simple in its nature. Stop making it so damn complex, which is an underlying tone of that video. So again, your creativity goes and I don't even know if you realize this, but your creativity is so many levels deep that I'm not sure I ever completely understand it, but I enjoy trying to figure it out. So I, I, I could show you the, the notes that I had for that, for that video. So I had sat down the, the evening before after I'd read the news uh, that moved me to make this, and I was thinking to myself, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And um, my wife was going to be busy for the day. And I was like, well, I've got the day. So what am I going to do? And I sat down at breakfast, I think it was, and I jotted out um, three or four lines of what I was going to talk about. And absolutely no action. All right. I just walked out with my, uh, it was just my phone. And I had a little mini clamp on tripod thing that I could stick it on something. And, um, and I had my recorder and microphone and laugh, but the, I'd forgotten the batteries. <laughs> for everything there. So I just used the audio off of the phone itself. And of course, it's close enough and all. And I came up with this idea of, of all that movement that I ended up making for four and a half minutes of, of a video that uh, really had no concept other than what the story, I knew what the story was, right? That, that came to me very quickly. Uh, that was the, the idea of, you know, this made me so mad that there was no, there was no physical post address where I could send a get well card. Right. right. That was the first thing when I read that post, it's like, somebody's got to send a card or flower, or whatever you want to do. That's sort of the traditional thing you would do. And I thought, well, I can send a DM in LinkedIn, but he might not see it for weeks or whatever. Right. That's depending on how people are with their media or what situation you're actually in. And, um, and so I just, that, that was the story. It's like, this is just I felt helpless. I felt I've got to do something. So I said, one thing I know that if you get out of the hospital, you'll see is you'll see a short video. And I made it only for you, right? And and I didn't expect to get so many reactions from other people. That really is what surprised me the most. Although, you know, in hindsight, the subject matter is pretty, pretty in your gut uh, for, as you said, to anybody who's in our generation is like, yep, we've, we've been sucked into this over the last 10 years and we, it's got great sides and it's done some really good things for some of us in our careers and, or it's just been really fun or informative and things like that. Uh, but it hits us all in the same situation. It's like, Ooh, I haven't been there yet, but yeah, that could happen to me too. And so I'm updating my digital Rolodex as we've been going on since then to say, I need to get some more information on people just, just in case, you know, just in case we get to that point. One of the things I really found amusing in all that was you said, well, I didn't know he had a sister <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> as, as, I learned, as I learned. That's just a common term of endearment. <laughs> and what's funny, I was talking to Tracy 
And she says, oh my God, I'm listening to this video about how this post came out from his sister. And she's like, oh my God, I wonder who that was. (laughs) It was you, Tracy. (laughs) Well, she said, my brother's in the hospital. I was like, how am I supposed to know? What, you know, whatever. Listen, I have one question. I know this will be, this is a question I ask all my podcast guests. So I'm very curious to see what you are. 17. That's my stock answer. What does innovation mean to you? Innovation is the activation of an idea that no one has thought of yet. And that could be a new way of doing something or a different way of doing something. To me, that's the definition of innovation. Throwing out what you know and what exists and looking for a different way that ends up being a better way. That, as I'm on a Zoom call with you here, and I can see six of, I believe you said, 14 patents that you hold over your shoulder in the background of your your studio there. Um, I'll take that. Um, I'm collecting all my guests' responses. I think there's going to be a book at some point of everyone's idea. There's no right or wrong answer, and they're all in a certain space, and I really appreciate You being here on my podcast today, um, I know we were supposed to meet in New Jersey, New York, somewhere a couple weeks ago. You blew me off. Yeah, I blew you off. Yeah, I had to go down for some some crawfish in New Orleans. Sorry. Next time. Next time. I will be back, and we'll do this one in person. And we might sit on that park bench, and we might have the birds coming around or whatever it is and making their noise, and we'll have a great time at it. And um, Thank you for being on my podcast today, Mark. Well, you're welcome to come over to the house. My property is 65,000 and one half acres. Um, I just have to take care of the little half acre. The state takes care of the 65,000, but it's a beautiful area. And uh, you are welcome without an invitation. You're one of the few people. Thank you very much. <laughs>